Hey everyone, welcome back to this week's episode of Console. In this uh, episode, we're going to look at bloom filters. Uh, I found a blog post that was actually written back in 2013, which kind of surprised me. I didn't didn't realize the blog post was that old, but I think that's a good thing. Um, it's written by Stavros. I'm not even going to try and pronounce his last his last name, but I'll definitely link to it in the description. Um, yeah, so this, this blog post is about bloom filters and it's in Python, which is my favorite programming language. So I was really happy to go through this post. I was happy to do a deep dive on an interesting data structure. Um, and I was more happy to go through the Wikipedia page for bloom filters because uh, uh, I think I might actually start thinking about using them more frequently than I had in the past. Um, anyway, without further ado, let's just jump right in. Okay, this is the blog post uh, written by Stavros. Hope I'm pronouncing that right. Um, he uh, mentions that he saw a Hacker News post, um, and that was the motivation for creating this balloon filter related post. Uh, what I didn't realize when I found this post is it, it was written in 2013, um, which actually to me is a good sign if it's still floating around the internet after what it's been um, seven years, something like that. And that means the content's actually probably pretty good. Um, so basically it's a quick little Python tutorial. It's not very long, uh, which again, I've mentioned before, I, I kind of like things that are small toy examples because they get the point across, right? You get to focus on the core idea here. In this case, the core idea is bloom filters, using bloom filters to do um, lookups, basically. Uh, there as a replacement for like uh, inverted indexes, a more efficient version of that basically. One thing I mentioned uh, in the introduction was uh, I was really happy to go over this blog post because it uh, made me look at bloom filters in more depth. I actually never really discussed them much in college. Um, I, I, I was aware of them as like <laughs> actually mostly people complaining that they got brought up in an interview and they didn't know much about them and they were pissed off that an interviewer would pick some weird esoteric uh, topic to interview them on. Um, but they're actually kind of interesting data structures in, in my opinion. Um, I'd heard about them tangentially and kind of like what they were used for but when I actually went and looked at the details of the Wikipedia page I was like, oh man, this could be used for a lot of stuff. And indeed, the Wikipedia page actually goes through a lot of the uh, professional use cases, things that are actually used in production with these bloom filters. So um, this particular blog post, though, like I said, is a very basic toy example. Basically, he's motivating it by saying like, okay, let's assume we have this, this uh, blog and we've got a bunch of like HTML content on this blog. Um, and we wanted to do some sort of client-side searching on this rather than like hitting a database or some sort of uh, elastic search cluster or something like that. What if we wanted to do the client-side uh, searching? Well, we could do something like this, basically is what he's saying here. So what we're going to do is we're going to uh, put, put, put our uh, fake you know, blog content. He's probably using real blog content, but in my case, you'll see I just generate a bunch of random words into a bunch of HTML files and call those my quote-unquote blog. Um, we're going to throw those into bloom filters and then do some run some search queries against them locally. So here I'm like, awesome. I love Python. Let's get started. So I go pip install pybloom. Command not found. <laughs> so I'm like, okay. Uh, I try, I think I tried pip3. Still doesn't work. I'm like, oh, dude, what's going on? Initially, I thought I didn't even have Python because I was running on this new user, as I've been talking about in this video series. Uh, but I'm like, oh, no, I definitely have Python. So then I try pip3. doesn't work. I'm like, oh, my gosh, what's going on? It's always something with these videos. Uh, turns out that you can't pip3 install PyBloom for some reason. And so eventually I'll cut, cut forward and show you that uh, I had to actually install the package from GitHub directly. All right, I won't bore you with the details, but uh, this is where I figure out uh, how to actually install the package that we're going to be using for this tutorial. All right, now we're coding. Uh, the first thing we are going to do here is we're going to import the PyBloom stuff that I finally got working. Um, and effectively, like I said, we're going to read in these posts. These, you know, in my case, they're going to be fake posts. And we're just going to split them up into a map, basically. But first, I need to generate my awesome blog content. 
So you can see here, this is where I, uh, how I generated my blog post. I just uh, randomly generated a thousand words and piped them into uh, post one, post two, post three, post four, post five, all the way up to post 10. And right here is where we're uh, reading in the posts that I had just generated before. Here I'm just printing out the map uh, that I create from reading in those posts. And then later I'll uh, print out the split post, right, as well. So they, like in this case we're uh, reading in the full text of the post. It's a bunch of just random gibberish, right? But uh, in the next one we'll split that up so that we have the individual words associated with the post in a map with the name of the post. In this case, it's just post one, two, three, four, up to ten, uh, and then keyed on the individual words in the post. So right here is where we're actually going to create the bloom filters. You can see uh, in the little text space under here, right? We're going to iterate through the words, the name, and the words of that split map that I was just talking about. We're going to create a bloom filter for each of the post names, and then we're going to add the words into the bloom filter. It's really just that simple, right? You can almost treat the bloom filter, you can think of it as a set, right? It's more of like a probabilistic set, where it's not 100% uh, certain, yes or no, the thing's going to be in the set. You're going to have some occasional false positives, and based on, you'll see here there's an error, error count or error rate that you pass into the bloom filter constructor, and based on that, you'll either have a higher probability of false positives or a lower probability of false positives. And the trade-off you're making here is with this, with space. It's like a probability and space trade-off kind of thing. So now that we have our bloom filter loaded up with our, you know, our fake blog posts, uh, we're gonna write a quick little search function here, which is what he's, he's done. Um, we're basically just gonna take the search string, we're gonna split it up and then search the bloom filter. And if the blog post, the bloom filter set, contains uh, every word in our search. We're going to return that post back and say, like, yes, this term mat or this blog post matches this search string because all those strings uh, occur in the bloom filter, basically the bloom filter for this particular post. So here I'm just trying to find a word in one of my blog posts that I can search for. Uh, one of them is intracanicular. <laughs> Didn't even know that was a word. Uh, so I'm searching for that one in the bloom filter and seeing if it can return back my the post that I put that that word in. And in fact, it does. It returns post one HTML. Um, I actually end up finding a false positive here in a second, right here. Uh, I, I search the word I and it returns back post four. And I'm like, oh, okay. So I guess the the word I got generated and put in that post. And I start investigating a little further. Um, and I actually can't find I in that blog post anywhere, so that proves our, our little uh, false positive assumption here. I, I wasn't even planning on testing that and putting it in the video, it just happened while I was playing around with the bloom filter. Um, actually the way I found out like for sure that it was a false positive is I changed the error rate and once I had increased the, or lowered the error rate, uh, the post 4 stopped, sh stopped showing up. So you can hear, see right here that I'm actually lowering the error rate. I run it again with the same search and boom, um, post four stopped showing up. That's everything for this week's episode. This one was a really fun one for me. Uh, the, the blog post wasn't that uh, advanced, I guess. It was short and it got the point across of like what what sort of things you can do with a bloom filter which which i'm happy for that but i think the most important thing for me was to go and look at that wikipedia page which i'll link to in the description of the video um, because there's a section in the wikipedia page that talks about uh, where bloom filters are used in production they talk about like google chrome using them for malicious urls they talk about uh, medium using them to detect if a user has already seen a post or not so it's, it's things like that that I'm like, oh, I think earlier in the video I talked about, you know, you can treat a, a bloom filter as like just a probabilistic set. So anytime you need, you need a set, but it doesn't need to be 100% right all the time, you can reach for a bloom filter, right? When you think of them in that context, they're a lot less daunting and less complex. Like you hear bloom filter and you think, oh yeah, <laughs> all these uh, graph algorithms come to mind and you're like, you know, oh, this is a super advanced data structure. It really is not that advanced, really, if you look at the actual implementation of the Bloom filter um, and like kind of its use cases and things like that. So I I'm really happy to go through that this week. Uh, I said mostly for the Wikipedia page and to see what the different use cases for Bloom filters are. Um, so that's everything for this week. 
and until next time.